There are lots of ways to make marking gauges. Thankfully, even a very basic marking gauge can be pretty accurate. So that's what we're gonna make. Something you can throw together with some simple tools in just a couple hours. I dug through my scrap bin and found some nice pieces of hardwood. I'm actually gonna make three different kinds of marking gauges and I'm gonna use different species of wood so that I can tell them apart without going to the trouble of looking closely at them. Most gauges are made up of two pieces of wood. The fence, which is the square block of wood, and the what you call it, which is the long narrow piece. I ripped this nice and straight with a handsaw while you weren't looking, so now my board is about two inches wide. This isn't a critical measurement, and neither is the length, to tell you the truth. Bigger fences are sometimes easier to use, at least I think so, but smaller gauges are easier to stuff in a toolbox drawer. I'm making two that are two inches square and one that's two inches by three inches. You'll see why later. Next come the whatchamacallits, or the poles, or the beams, or the sticks, or whatever you want to call them. You can make them square, which is easier to cut from square stock, but it will require a square mortise later on. Or you can make them from dowels, which are harder to make yourself, but you can slip them into round holes, which are easier to bore. So it's a trade-off, unless you're rich and you can just throw money away on fancy store-bought dowels. I make them both. Now remember, we're making three different types of gauges. So just like I made three different fence blocks, I'm making a variety of beams. You obviously don't have to make all these different kinds. You just have to decide if you want square or round. The square ones are simple enough. These two gauges will get three quarter inch beams and this wider one will get two half inch beams. The round ones are the same, except I planed flat sides on two half inch round dowels. Now it's time to cut the mortises. If you're using round beams, you're all set. But for square ones, you have to chisel out some corners. It's always a good idea to chop halfway through one side and then flip it over and do the other half. And take your time. Don't try to knock this all out with one strike. You're gonna split these. In fact, you may even want to just lay them out on a full size board, cut your mortises, and then cut your blocks to side. You'll be much less likely to split it out. The double beam gauge is a little bit different. You'll have to drill two holes side by side, which is pretty straightforward but trickier with the round ones because the position of your holes depend on how much you've planed off the flat surfaces on your half inch dowels. It's much better to get the holes too close together than too far apart because you could always just plane a little more off the dowels until you get a better fit. What I did is just stuck my dowels on end right where I was gonna want the holes to trace around them. And then I eyeballed where the center points would be, intentionally making them a little closer together than they should be. After I bore them out, I can plane down each dowel until I get a nice smooth fit. Traditionally, you'd use a little wooden wedge to lock the fence in place. And if you want to do that, just make your mortises a little bit wider so there's room for that wedge. I'm not a big fan of tapping a wedge in order to tighten down the fence. I feel like it can move that fence out of place. And a lot of old timey woodworkers must have agreed with me. So they started using wooden screws to tighten their gauges. If you have a wood thread kit, that's exactly what you should do but most people don't. So we have to rely on some hardware store solutions. I'm gonna use some quarter inch thumb screws and just tap right into the wood. Or you can even use some thread inserts. Now if you made your fence from some nice hardwood, you can tap those threads right in and they'll last a long time. Just drill your hole a couple, I don't know, 30 seconds under size and you can even make yourself a tap out of an old bolt. This will last quite a while because you're not gonna be torquing down on these gauges. But if you find that they do wear out over time, you can always drill your hole a little bit bigger and add some threaded inserts. The pins would traditionally have been made from some type of hardened steel, but a brad nail or finishing nail is a good solution for us today. Be sure though to drill a pilot hole slightly smaller than the size of the nail because you want it to fit in nice and tight and not back out. And you also don't want to split your wood when you pound it in. If you've been following along what I've been doing, you should have three different kinds of gauges two single pole and one double pole. You want to stick a pin in the end of one of those single poles and in both of the poles in the double pole gauge. It's also a good idea to put your pins as close to the inner edges of that double pole gauge as you can so that it's easier to set your mortising chisel. The last gauge is a bit more difficult. This one gets a blade instead of a pin. You just want a narrow blade, maybe like a quarter inch jigsaw blade. That would work out perfectly. 
You'd have to make a mortise in the end of your beam to hold the blade. So drill a hole about the same size, a quarter inch, and then square it off on the front end. It's a good idea to stay about a half inch back from the end of the pole so you don't split it out when you drive your wedge in later. Now you've got to elongate that hole so that you can fit a wedge. And this requires a little bit of eyeball work. You want to step back about an, I don't know, quarter inch, maybe three eighths, and cut at an angle towards the bottom of that hole that you drilled so that you're only making the top of the hole wider. It's a good idea to just pare it away a little bit at a time, take your time, that's what woodworking is all about, and then make a hardwood edge to fit into the tapered mortise so you can secure the blade with a tap and a nice friction fit. It requires a little bit of trial and error, but it's really not that big a deal to get the angles to match. Well, that's it for this episode of the Old Timey Workshop. Next week, we're going to start on a saw bench and talk a little bit about the different kinds of saws that an old timey woodworker would use. Till then, sit back, have yourself a cold one. Because old timey woodworkers definitely earn it, my friend.